Homework 10, section 5.3, Independent Events and the Multiplication Rule, video 3. In the previous video, we came up with a formula for finding the probability of A and B, a joint probability, if you will. In this example, which is taken from homework question number 1, we're given that the probability of A is 0.2, or 20%. The probability of B is 0.88, or 88%. And the probability of B, given that A has already occurred, is 0.6, or 60%. And we're asked to find the probability that A and B occur at the same time. This is just a formula. But be careful. We were given some information that we do not need here. The formula for the probability of A and B, and more generically, the formula for the probability of, probability of one event and a second event, it doesn't matter what they're called, is the probability of the first event times the probability of the second event given that the first event has already occurred. I think that's actually worth writing generically. Probability of a first event and second event is equal to the probability of the first event times the probability of the second event given that the first event has already occurred. It doesn't matter if they're called A, B, X, Y, Fred, Barney, Alpha, or Beta. All that matters is where they're in position. The reason I point this out is if for whatever reason I asked you the probability of B and A, then this would be B, and this would be A given B, which we don't have. So going back to this problem, which numbers do we need to multiply? Well, the probability of A is 0 0.2, so there's a 20% chance that A will happen. And given that A has already happened, the probability that B will happen is 60%. And if you multiply those, I believe you get 0 0.12. So it's actually a pretty easy problem if you just recognize that it's a formula and they gave me all the pieces I needed. And they even gave me something I didn't need. Fascinating. This makes me wonder though, and this isn't part of the question, but could we figure out the probability of A given B? I know we're not asked that, but with everything that we know, could we figure that out? So consider this a follow-up. Well, did we not have a formula for conditional probability? Probability of A given B is the probability of B on the bottom, and the probability of A and B on the top. Remember. The probability version of the formula for conditional probability has the joint probability on the top and the probability of the condition on the bottom. Do we not know both of these? Well, we calculated the probability of A and B. It was 12%. We were given the probability of B, which we didn't need. It was 88%, and that won't divide evenly. So I'll just divide it on my calculator. Comes out to be 0 0.136 and the 36 is repeating. So they gave us some information that we didn't need and honestly in the homework question we didn't have to use it. But I was kind of wondering if I could use it for something and the answer is yeah. I can figure out the other conditional probability, the probability of A given that B has occurred. And notice that it's not the same as the probability of B given that A has occurred, so the order does matter. 